Black Talk Radio Network is made possible in part with help from the Black Talk Media Project, a North Carolina-based nonprofit engaged in the production and distribution of independent digital black media. Find out more by going to blacktalkradionetwork.com or blacktalkmediaproject.org and look for the menu tab, Crowdfunding Black Media. Black Talk Media Project, helping to provide you with new black media for the new millennium. opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Blacks in Business Radio on Black Talk Radio Network. Peace, greetings, Bibi Fahodier. Happy New Year. I'm your host this evening, um, Erica Foxy Mama Parker Smith. And this evening, I'm actually going to unmute her right now. I also have hosting with me um, the co-founder and owner of Amentus Key Artisan Skincare, um, Onyx Burrell. You say hi, Onyx. Hi, y'all. <laughs> Can you hear All me? All right. And tonight we are going to be discussing entrepreneurship as always. And we have two amazing guests for you this evening. Our first guest, um, guest is F. Kenneth. Um, he is going to come on and talk about his magazine, his books, and also um, his blog talk radio show that he has and some other things. And then we're also going to talk to an amazingly talented young lady, Zahira Nurtruth. So we'll be speaking with her as well. So let me see if we have, I believe he is on the line. Hello? Is this Mr. Taylor? Nope, it says they are muted. Okay, let me unmute him. Let me try that again. Okay, hello? From St. Louis? Yes. Is this Mr. Taylor? Yes, it is. How are you? I'm fine. And how about yourself? I am wonderful. Well, before we get started, please take a moment and introduce yourself to our listening audience, if you don't mind. Oh, okay. Um, everyone, my name is F. Kenan Taylor. I'm a self-published author here in St. Louis, Missouri. I also do free, uh, freelance writing, and I'm the creator owner of Some Unique Magazine. Okay. So first things first, so how long have you been an entrepreneur? I would say that I'm still in the transitioning phase um, because I do <laughs> have a part, um, a full-time a full-time job that I have to work to pretty much finance my magazine. But I started the magazine about three and a half years ago. Three and a half years ago. Okay, what's the name of your magazine? It's something, you know, kind of like something, only a slang uh-huh. version. Um, something Unique Magazine, LLC. 
And the magazine, I do my best to make it as culturally diverse as possible because I want, at the end of the day, I want a product that everyone can relate to, you know, regardless of what walk of life you are, uh, race, religion, creed, so forth. Now, is there a certain target audience for it? So, okay, you said it's culturally diverse. So is it geared towards parents, teenagers, children? Like, who is the target for the audience? If I would narrow it down to the target audience, I'll, I would probably say anywhere um, it would be an age group, more so about 25 to 40-year-olds. Okay. Because, that is um, a large demographic. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the issues and topics um, that that the magazine discusses, that particular age group uh, um, relates to it the most. Uh, okay. We discuss what kind of topics do you have, Kenneth? Oh, can you give us um, an idea for those of us who aren't familiar with your magazine? Like, what kind of um, what kind of things do you discuss in there? Sure. We discuss creative, visual arts, education, family relationships, spirituality, um, th- things along that things along that nature. And we also um, cover current current events. Okay, so is this a print publication or is it a digital magazine? Where would, you know, our listeners, if somebody wanted to grab a copy of your magazine, how would they go about doing that? It originally started as an online publication. Um, I literally just moved into, um, into print last month in December. You can order online at blurb.com. That's B L U R B dot com. Blurb dot com. Mm-hmm. Okay. And also, so for your magazine, well, a couple of things that I heard you say in there that um would be really great for our listeners. Because what we try to do on this show in particular on the third Thursdays is really be an insp- inspiration for people who either are just starting out or even seasoned business owners to, you know, have some things to think about that maybe they hadn't even thought, you know, oh, wow, yep, I'm right. maybe I need to do that for my business or, you know, just various things that they need to consider. So you said that um, you, you still work a full-time job because we talk to all flavors of entrepreneurs here because some people do work a full-time job until, you know, to finance their vision as you stated. Um, and that does not detract from anyone being, you know, any less of an entrepreneur because they may be working a full-time job still. So we definitely um, can relate to that and um, and those things. So have you been, what is your game plan or your map, your journey out of, you know, having to straddle those two worlds? Well, as far as getting the magazine to the point where I can leave my full-time job, the biggest thing that I realized I need to improve on is uh, marketing and advertising. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, without marketing, uh, marketing and advertising, you're just not going to see the clientele um, that you really that you really need to um, to fully support to not only su- fully support yourself, but anyone that's you know a part of a part of your company. And I know that's where I've fallen short at last year. Well, what do you currently do for marketing and advertising? Are you on social media? Do you market that okay. way? What kind? Primarily, um, I've primarily been on social media. I'm st- um, like I said, I, and I realized that that 
it helps, but you can't do it off of social media alone. So now I'm trying new things. I'm um, doing more local local events. Um, I'm collaborating and networking with other individuals or small businesses, and you know that share a similar a similar audience. And I'm looking into um, um, advertisement, like local papers. So I know you mentioned also that you have a blog talk radio show. So do you also use that platform to cover the same topics that are in your magazine with something unique? Yeah. Yes and no. Um, reason I say yes and no, because a lot of times on the show, we, uh, I have a co-host, Casey Bethlehem. And a lot of times we have, Guests and they're usually entrepreneurs as well. So, um, mm -hmm. but when we don't have a guest, then a lot of times we do cover some um, some, some of the same topics and so forth. But on the show, we've spoken we've spoken to authors, artists, uh, musicians, small business owners ministers so so do you when we are just starting out we wear several hats so I know that putting a magazine together you know there are several different um, roles and several different um, duties so how many hats are you currently wearing do you also you know do you write for the magazine and also do the layouts and the cover and you know take care of you know, all those kinds of design and behind the scene things that go into the magazine as well? All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> um, I cannot tell you how many hats I honestly wear. Uh, <laughs> and that's one thing I didn't realize when I first uh, when I first started this and was researching it and Everything I knew it'll be a lot of work, but it, it has truly been a learning experience uh, because I, I do so many other things you just mentioned um, as far as putting each month each monthly issue of the magazine together. Um, I do that, and that's everything from what type of font I'm going to use on the cover to what's going on the back cover and everything in between how each page is laid out, what articles are going to go in there, um, which article from which writer. You know, um, I do that. I help promote my writers because a lot of my writers are also self-published authors and they're, they're kind of new to the business side of it. So um, I, I have to get them interviews and book signings and, and so forth. Um, two of my writers are from India. They're based out of India. And what I learned with them is that I also have to be a coach at times. <laughs> you know, and along with, like you said, everything that goes on behind, behind the scenes, um, like um, tax preparation, um, business licenses, um, reaching out to potential guests to come on our show or someone to interview for for an upcoming issue of the magazine. Um, man, I, I can't <laughs> I can't name all the stuff that I that I do. Um, you know, and so what, I have what inspired to, you to start a magazine? Did you have experience in that realm, especially being an author um, and a writer? I did. I had previously wrote for two um, online magazines, and honestly, what <laughs> what prompted me to start it was that the last magazine I had wrote for, I had got 
pretty frustrated with um, with the magazine and the editor as writers and editors that's just going to happen um, I'm not always going to see eye to eye but um, so it just reached a point where I said screw it I'll do it myself okay. <laughs> and and I literally started researching uh, from that point from that point on so as far as your audience so I have a, a, a question so for your audience you said it's for ages 25 to 40 and are these like for your magazine's reach are you reaching people just in the U.S. or are you reaching people outside the U.S. as well the print um, <clears throat> as far as the print version of the magazine uh, magazine it's more so U.S. based but online with the um online and especially with the with the blog talk show is I also get international um international audience. So when you so the Indian writers that you have working for the magazine currently, how do they I guess culturally, you know, it's a bit different um between you know, culturally there's a difference between there right. and here. So how do they how does that work as far as them writing for an American audience? And are they um Indian nationals or are they like African or people, you know, part of the diaspora who live in India? Um they they live in India. <clears throat> um mm-hmm. but as far as how it works out, it actually works out pretty good. Um, one of the things that I learned by working with them is that a large majority of, or a large portion of India is um, actually speaks English as a first language. So mm-hmm. um, that was something I did not know, but it obviously made communication a lot, a lot easier. Um, but as far as as far as the Indian writers writing for an American magazine, they've done exceptionally well. Um, and I, I think it's because I, I wanted to, I wanted, you know, their story of what like, everyday life is like in India. So it wasn't so much of uh, them trying to write for an American magazine. It was more so tell us about India. So a lot of the articles um, you can see some on our website but a lot of the articles a lot of their articles deal with um, Indian traditions and you know festivities and cuisine and some of um, some of the seasonal weather, or you know, so I, I found that to be really interesting, and as well as our audience, you know, because all we see is what what we might look up online or what we see on TV, you know. You know, so do you have plans to expand that beyond India? I would like then to. Is your target market then more or less India than more so than American? Or is no. it more like you're everyone sharing, uh, connecting, um, co- connecting cultures? It, right. It is more like connecting, connecting cultures. Yeah. If I find an opportunity to work with a writer from China, you know, I would gladly uh, jump on that. So it, it's not just India; it's just that, for whatever reason, uh, reasons, my path crossed with their paths, and we connected. Okay. So I also happened to see um, 
that you have a sci-fi book coming out. Would you like to tell us about that? I do have a um, have a new sci-fi coming out. Um, the title is actually an acronym. It's Pro P P R O B E, and this one is <clears throat> it's pretty close to home. Um, the acronym stands for Project Research of Band Experiment. And the reason it hits close to home is because my father actually came up with like the title and loosely the idea for the book. He came up with that years ago. Um, basically what he wanted um, was a group of misfit scientists, so to speak, that keep having these failed experiments. Um, that's all I had to go off of initially. Um, I had put put off doing that book for I don't know how many years. And what made me write it was last year, about this time last year, um, we discovered a tumor on my father's own, I believe it's the right lobe of his brain. And so he had um he had to have surgery and they removed uh what I believe a pretty good portion of the tumor but it in doing so they also had to remove a portion of his brain. Um while he was in um, surgery he had I believe it was a stroke and then sometime after that he had a seizure um, this was um, I think this was all within a month's time frame um, he's doing better uh, he's doing a lot better today but there is like a part of him that's gone and you know it, it's a part of him that we'll never get back like his long term memory is still there he can sit down and talk to us about things we did when we were kids but short term memory um, that comes and goes yeah. you know and so last year was extremely rough for my family and that's when I said I need to do this book um, his birthday is February 11th. I think I started writing the book this past summer, maybe around June, um, June or July, somewhere around there. I think I started started the book because I wanted to have it done in time for his birthday this year, so I can give it to him as a birthday gift. So that's that's what inspired that um, as far as the storyline I obviously kept the five scientists um, the story they, they do have they're working for like a top secret um, corporation or whatnot that does all kinds of undercover Experiments and so forth with the with government with government funding. So the scientists um, basically what's been going on is lately all their um, experiments has failed for one one reason or another, and now it's to the point where the corporation and the government has given them a deadline to to turn things around, or else they're going. They're just going um, going to cut funding. And what kind of experiments so, are the characters in your book doing? What are they like human experience experiments? Is this some sort of technology? Is no, it biological? It's, like, it's techno, uh, te technology. Uh, I can't talk tonight. <laughs> technology, te uh, technology based. And okay, like one experiment, uh, one experiment is kind of playing around with using um, I'm trying to think of the word <laughs> it's like you can 
teleport someone from one location to another. You know, um, so that's something they they're playing around with. Um, another one is a weather system where they can create any um, any type of weather condition at any location that they choose to. Um, the catch is while they're on the tightrope with the corporation that they work for and the government, there's a terrorist cell that's planning to take over the first uh, first man moon colony which has uh, like advanced satellite satellite capabilities and so forth. So this terrorist cell wants to take over this uh, moon moon facility so they can get control of the world's satellites and initially uh, initially take over the world so to speak. What happens is that oh I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, so I was going to ask how far in the future is this, or is this present day? Well, when is it set? <clears throat> this is near future. Um, the the year is about 2039, uh, to be to be exact. So it's not too far off. You know, it's not like Star Wars future. So how are you... Um coming along with making your deadline of February 11th because that's just a few weeks away I'm pretty close to finishing yeah um, okay. and is this I'm about something that's going to be fourths. yeah I'm about three fourths okay. or more of the way done so is this going to be just a commemorative book that you're going to present as a gift or is this going to be something that if people wanted to actually read it, like it's going to be something readily available to the public too? No, it'll be for sale. <laughs> it, okay. it will be for sale, but but my my main purpose in doing the book again was to dedicate it to my father because right. um <clears throat> I really want it, I really want him to see that, you know, come come into fruitation, you know. So that that's the main purpose on um, that one. But again, it'll also be available to the public as well. So how do you um as far as like um time management how do you juggle all of those different tasks of having a full-time job um the magazine mm. the radio show <laughs> well the um blog talk show and then also writing a book how do you balance and manage all of those very carefully <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty much you kind of set aside a day for this, a day for that, and do your best to stick to that. You know, um, at times, will the days overlap each other? Yes. You know, but um, that, I mean, that's all you can really do. You know, you can't do everything every day, you know. Um, then um oh I keep losing my train of thought tonight. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So with all of that, so do you because sometimes we do have like parents who are also entrepreneurs, do you have to also mm -hmm. juggle those responsibilities as well? I do have um a god uh well actually three god daughters. The ages, okay. uh, 20, 25, and 7. Um, I spend the most time with the 7-year-old. So I have her like, several days out the week. So in a sense, yes. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, we just like to show people that, you know, it's not always, you know, you just have to work with the time that you have because we all get the same 24 hours in a day. Um, right. And we just have to work with that time the best that we can. 
So especially yeah. when you're wearing multiple hats, juggling multiple, you know, business related things, work related responsibilities, mm-hmm. and then also having, you know, additional duties of, you know, caring for, yeah. you know, our young minds that we're responsible for. So we want to make All sure right. we give that its due attention as well. Exactly. And, you know, another thing, too, is that um, I don't think a lot of people realize, especially if they're the entrepreneur starting a small business or whatnot, get people on your team. Get people on your team that can I was help just you. about to ask you about your support system. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> Jumping ahead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you have to learn to delegate. Um, and that's hard for me because I'm impatient. Um, it, it's like when I want something done, I want it done now. I want it done like this. Okay, you're not going to do it. Never mind. I'll do it. <laughs> you know? But, <clears throat> and then, but you you have to learn to um, trust people, you know, to do that they're going to do, you know, they're going to do a great job at whatever task that you've given them. Um, And like I said, for somebody like me, um, I'm better at it now, but I'm still a work in progress. But, uh, But at first, I was just like, Okay, look, <laughs> I needed this done yesterday. <laughs> um, so yes, delegate. Get a team around you. Um, this person does that. That person does this. And it, it does help. It helps save time. It helps move things forward. But you know, occasionally you still have to check up on. Hey. Did we get this taken care of, or where are we at with this? So, how do you? Um, so, you said you're transitioning to full time entrepreneurship. So, what are some challenges um, that mm-hmm. you see, or that you've overcome in making that a reality as you work towards that? Oh, I would say. One of the um, biggest challenges that I overcame was not not being stagnant. You know, um, what I mean was, like, I think it was 2015, uh, things were kind of at a crawl. It's like at first it had, you know, um, I had picked up steam. I had a lot of um, great writers and everything. And then the writers, for whatever reason, um, started leaving, do, um, doing their own thing. So I was constantly um, looking for new writers. And um, I, I really didn't know how to move things forward and for a while it just felt like I was just sitting still but once I got things back on track um, I pretty much saw every opportunity to to brand like uh, for instance with the Blah Talk show you know I was like okay if we could start this Blah Talk show under the magazine banner then that's another um uh, that's another outlet or platform to get to get the word out about us you know uh we could reach so do a, you have a wide audience right, um <clears throat> yeah now we also have an open mic a poetry open mic each month at a local bookstore um and we just launched that this past weekend and we had a great turnout um, so that's 
that's something else that's helping us locally. Um, I, like I mentioned before, I network with other small businesses and small business uh, business owners. So I help promote promote their business. They promote us. And things have Are been. Are small businesses allowed to um, purchase advertising space in your magazine? Yes, small business um, entrepreneurs definitely. <clears throat> Definitely. Um, so have you def- um, done a roadmap just to assess, like, you know, what worked in 2017, what didn't work, and then what your um, path forward for 2018 and what your goals are for this year for the magazine and also helping you to, you know, take those steps necessary, right. you know, to your path to freedom. That's what I always call it. And you can get off the plantation. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody wants to be on the plantation. Um, it, it's funny you mention that because I'm actually in the process of of doing that right now. Um, that's why a little while ago I mentioned um, one of the things that I fell short, I definitely fell short on last year was advertising and promoting, you know, um, both in the frequency of how you know, like how often I would advertise a service right. or something that the magazine did, maybe an event we covered, or uh, <clears throat> not only the the frequency, but um, also oh man, I got to get <laughs> but oh um, the outlets that I use, like I primarily stuck. To social media, which is not enough alone, you know. Um, a lot of people say, "Well, if I advertise on, online, I can uh, I can reach a lot more, a lot more people, or a uh, well, bigger base of people." Because a lot of people well, don't realize that when you try to focus solely on social media as your advertising for some people it works Mm -hmm. it totally works because that's where your audience lives and and that's that's where where, you know then that's where you want to be exactly but for other people it's it's really a tough job to it takes a lot more to reach people online because you have to cut through Mm -hmm. all the noise and you have to cut through everybody else that's on online too and all that other right. chatter and kind of rise above that. And to do that, that takes, you know, sometimes a little luck and then more exactly. research and skill in navigating that arena. Yeah. But, here, you know, here's something that a lot of people also fail to realize about um, social media. Um, let's say you advertise online. You advertise through social media. And it says you reach 1,000 people. Okay. That don't mean 1,000 people (laughs) will be investing in your company. (laughs) It it may be 100 people out of that 1,000 that that might come to your website. Out of that hundred, out of the one hundred that comes to your website, ten or fifteen of them might browse around. Right. Out of that fifteen, out of that ten or fifteen that browse around, only one or two of them might actually purchase something. <laughs> I just had that conversation with someone today. Yeah. You know, and yes. people don't realize that. So, that, and that's. I think that over that specific oversight um, is why social media doesn't work for everyone or um, doesn't work for a lot of people, you know, because they're not looking at that. They're just looking at, oh, well, we reached this many people. Well, that's good, but out of that many, out of that many people. How many of them actually patronized you? 
Mm-hmm. But people get caught up on they want likes. They want yeah. the likes. And they but feel you like know, the likes. There's other ways. Instead of thinking of using social media as the traditional advertising sense, um, is the premise of your magazine, for example, is connecting cultures. Social media can be a great avenue to connect with people internationally that you may not be able to have reached otherwise. Like you said, you have a full-time job. You know how difficult it is with a full-time job to hop on a plane? (laughs) (laughs) You know, once, twice, three times a month? I mean, some people do it, Mm -hmm. but that's not always practical. So, you know, looking on the pro side of things, Social media can right. definitely help there. And, yes, and, and not and only that, building brand loyalty and brand recognition takes time. And a lot of times, it, it does. This, you know, the because of the culture it, it that does. we live in with technology, you literally, you know, you can get everything is at your fingertips. So people expect mm-hmm. when they're building a business for things to happen quickly. And that does not always happen in that way. And it takes, oh. it just takes time. It really, right. in, in all honesty, and sometimes you know, we need to be patient with ourselves because people give it that. Well, you know, in three to five years, I'm supposed to be successful, and it's like, no. If you really go and talk to other entrepreneurs, it takes people sometimes mm-hmm. ten, fifteen years. You know, before oh, before they exactly. get there. Um, and see that three to five year thing. What people people have a misconception about that. Um, they believe what you just said. Uh, well, in three to five years, I'll be okay. I, you know, I'll be getting a, a return on. But as you stated, that's not um, that's not always the case. A lot of times, that's not the case. What they fail to realize about the three to five year thing is that um, the statistics state that most most small businesses or startups fail in that time frame. And so the let's reason that. <clears throat> huh? but let's talk about what fail means. <laughs> because a lot you know, this is something that I've talked about things. this on previous shows, what failure actually mm-hmm. really looks like. And it's like it's not a failure until you quit. You quit. It's like yeah. they, they can count <laughs> that when somebody decides I'm going to fold up shop and I'm done and they move on to something else. Yeah. They don't include in those numbers the people who because, you know, and I've said this before, failure is a part of success because those it successful is. entrepreneurs that a lot of times people see, they don't see, like people often miss the hundred times that they fail to get to that win. Right. Yeah. You know, and, or how mm-hmm. many times that they restructured their business, revamped their business, redesigned I'm their business, you know, and just <laughs> did all these things and get on that path to success. <clears throat> and also defining what success looks like for you. It, it, exactly. Also, you know, we take those, those statistics and we hear those, we can't always take them literally. No, and we it's like there are um, definitive reasons why people decide to move on. Yeah, you you're right. We can't always take them literally, but we should always take them into consideration. Um, I think the I, I I haven't I didn't realize this until I was really devoted and dedicated um, with the magazine. Um, but I think the reason why a lot of startups and small businesses fail within that time frame is because the um the the creator, the owner or whatnot a lot of times some people rush into things, they don't fully, you know, look at everything or research everything or map things out. And then two um, the other thing is that in that time you you dumped so much money into this business but mm-hmm. you're not getting a return <laughs> you know and I, I think that's the biggest 
<clears throat> one of the biggest reasons so many so many people would just move on to something um to something else you know well, um uh but any uh, most entrepreneurs would tell you that you know the road to this is this path of entrepreneurship a lot of people think that means oh you're rolling in money and that's not right. always the case right. you know it's like we <laughs> you trade a lot you, you know you, you give do. up you know what i mean to to do it full time and mm-hmm. depend and it also comes down to like what you're doing <laughs> and then also yeah. what your goals are for your business where your heart's at and where your head's at right right mm-hmm. I, I totally um totally agree totally totally agree with it that. is definitely not for the faint of heart and it's not for no. because and that's another i think just differentiation that we also have to make because there are the word entrepreneur has been at least in my opinion, this is strictly Erica's opinion right now that I'm about to share. <laughs> um, the word entrepreneurship, in my humble opinion, has been co-opted and used interchangeably with the word hustler. Yeah. yeah. And all hustlers are not entrepreneurs. No, they're not. <laughs> and all entrepreneurs are not hustlers. So no. there, there's a key difference there because a lot of times people... You know, even though you can be an entrepreneur who has hustle, that does right. not make you a hustler. Because hustlers are right. looking for that quick money, fast money. Right. And, How and can I just like that, get this and get paid um, real quick? Yeah, I had this. I had a very similar discussion with someone once, and um, hustlers versus entrepreneurs, and. I say, well, an entrepreneur can be a um, can be a hustler. I say, there's more than one type of, of hustler. A hustler, like you said, isn't always someone on the street doing God knows what to get some fast money. Uh, a hustler can be someone dedicated to building that small business. You know, someone who who leaves their full-time job and goes out networking or attends a business after hour networking event or, you know, someone that that comes home from work, helps the kids with with homework, and then maybe they're making calls. um, They jump on the phone for an hour or two um, making calls to take her other behind the scenes type things with the business. So uh, a hustler, an entrepreneur, in essence, an entrepreneur can be a hustler because you're the creator or the owner of this company or whatnot, then you have to stay on top of things. You know, but that's you, what I said. One is, one is a noun and one is a verb. So entrepreneurs <laughs> are, are the verb. They have hustle. Right. Yeah, so that's that differentiation <laughs> there. You know, so it's like being a hustler is different than being an entrepreneur an with entrepreneur. hustle. Yeah. And just because you're a hustler, also, I was not alluding to illicit activities or anything illegal. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> People are just but, like, you know. You know, you know but there, there's like, a stereotype on that, though, and that's what people naturally think of when they hear the word hustler. You know, <laughs> that's what it, it's a stereotype on that word. You know, that's what they think of when they hear that word. <laughs> so, yeah. sadly, I mean, and, well, because to me, the hustlers are the people that you know, the latest thing was hey, you can get $100 for $800 just sign up for this app and everybody's going to get paid. Like, to me, that's hustle <laughs> mentality. <laughs> That's why people. That's why so many people think that, or so many people associate entrepreneurship with wealth or being rich. On top of the fact, um, you see all these look um, pop up advertisements and stuff, and these pyramid 
uh, um, these pyramid um, schemes and stuff. Oh, you can make this much money in a week or a month, you know, working for yourself or working from home, you know. And sadly enough, a lot of people go for it. <laughs> but that's where the, I mean, no matter what you do, you're only going to get out of it what you put into it. True. And that's just really just across the board. And sometimes it's a matter of us taking a step back as business owners and entrepreneurs and saying, you know what, I may have been at this for a while, but I don't have all the answers and I don't know everything. So maybe it comes down to I need to get some more education around the area that I'm working in. Maybe I need to shadow a mentor, find a mentor in the industry that I'm in. Um, joining various groups, you know, attending different uh-huh. meetups, bouncing ideas off other people, and getting in a different circle, and surrounding yourself with different people that, to actually get the knowledge and the things that you need to to you, get there. Um, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because um, that's exactly what I what I did. Um, I have a neighbor who owns his own real estate company and um, we've known each other for years we've um, been neighbors for for um, years so when he saw that you know I was starting a magazine and everything he um, he literally took me under his wing you know mm-hmm. um, like the first networking or business after our uh networking events I went to there were events that he um, he invited me to um, he introduced me to so many other successful uh, entrepreneurs and business owners and you know <clears throat> to this day uh, <clears throat> sometimes I still come to come to him on things like that um, when I was when I first came up with the idea of starting an online magazine, uh, I had a business consultant. You know, I would meet with her, you know, and, you know, for so long. And she's listening. Uh, she, um, I hope they're both listening, but I know she's uh, she's listening tonight. So, so, Lisa, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Rick, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, so can you talk but, about what that relationship was, was like for people who may not have um, worked with a business consultant before and tell us like you know what they did, how they helped you um, what uh, motivated you to get a business consultant um, overall the relationship was it was very uh, very educational um, and she helped me get from from the starting block around the track to the uh, from the first lap to the next lap, you know, it, it's like um, every time I got stuck on something or I wasn't sure about something, I would I could either call her up and say, "Hey, this is what's going on," you know, or we'll schedule a meeting. And she would say, well, this didn't work because you did or didn't do that. Or, you know, um, she pretty pretty much kept me on track and focused. You know, um, I would advise anyone who's serious about starting a small business to look into um, getting a business, um, a business consultant. It would be okay. well worth it. <laughs> um, okay. And also, as we head into the break, um, for anybody that's out there listening, you can also call in toll-free in the U.S. and Canada at one 510 9025 or you can reach us on 704-802-5056. And you can enter, you know, questions or comments in the queue and just hit star star and watch your background noise. Okay, so can you again tell us um, 
you know, how we could get in touch with you, where we can find your magazine, um, and all of those things, sure. and where we can also hear your blog talk radio show. Okay, um, you can find almost um, my books on Amazon, Amazon dot com. Uh, a couple okay. of my books are on Lulu dot com, which is L U L U dot com. The magazine can be purchased online at Blurb dot com. That's B B L U R B dot com. Um, you can also find um, some unique magazine. We're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Um, Google Plus, just type in the name. Some and can magazine. you spell that for people? Oh, it's um, S O M E apostrophe N, unique magazine. Um, but a lot of times, you know, if you just start typing in the word some, S O M E, a lot of times it'll pop up. Um, okay. See, our. Website is www.someuniquemag, and that's mag, M A G, dot com. Also, I want to <laughs> remind everyone um, February, t- February 10th will be the next Poetic Vibes at the Book House in Maplewood, Missouri, 7352 Manchester Boulevard, 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, on this show. Oh, Blog Talk. Um, some unique magazine. Uh, some unique magazine. Just go to Blog Talk, type in some unique magazine. Um, and the show, the show is Books, Books, Jazz, Coffee, and Smoke. That's All the right primary now. show. <laughs> okay. Um, that's the primary show. We, our, our other show, which is one hour. Um, one hour long is KG Stouts for the moment and I believe he comes back from hiatus next week on Monday and that will be 9 p.m. Eastern time so all right so is there any parting words or inspiration you would like to leave our fellow listening audience um, budding entrepreneurs, seasoned entrepreneurs with as we head into the break? Um, yeah, I just want to tell anyone this is more so for the aspiring <laughs> or transitioning entrepreneurs like myself. Um, don't give up. Be persistent. Be serious. Take everything serious. Um, listen to advice. <laughs> <laughs> probably listen more you know than anything even if it's something you don't agree with um, to those to the entrepreneurs that are successful you know remember what it was like when you were on your journey up so take that next person under your wing you know each one, each one reach one each one teach one yeah. that's right Well, thank you. It has been an absolute pleasure spending this hour with you and hearing more about some unique magazine. And we look forward to you finishing your book. So definitely keep us posted um, and we'll be on the lookout for that. And um, Onyx, is there anything you want to say also? Hello? Sorry. Yes, we're going to break. Oh, okay. okay. I just wanted to say thank you. You know, it's nice hearing from you and your perspective on, you know, entrepreneurship and as a okay, writer, well, especially. Well, thanks for having me. I truly appreciate it. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. And we'll be back with the Hear a Truth.
Hi, the Black Talk Media Project would like to invite you to become a member of the BTR Community subscription-based social media platform. BTR Community is a platform that was set up for the listening audience of Black Talk Radio Network, the number one independent black radio network online. For just $24 per year, your subscription gives you access to an interactive space to share information with like-minded people with your privacy guaranteed. Your subscription will go a long way to help us maintain and improve our current media platforms. It will also help provide a budget so that we can begin the task of establishing localized media centers and radio stations across the United States. The best way to show your support and appreciation for what we do here at Black Talk Radio is to subscribe. Help us to help you be informed. Join btrcommunity.com today. And we are back. And this hour, um, again, if you want to call in with questions, comments, get in on the conversation, you can reach us toll free at 1-866-510-9025. Or we can be reached at 704-802-5056. You can also enter comments or questions in the queue and just hit star star and just watch your background noise. And this is every Thursday from 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and 8 p.m. That is Pacific, Central, and Eastern Time. And you can also find us at blacktalkradionetwork.com. So this hour, we are back and we are going to have an awesome conversation with a talented young lady, Miss Zahira Nurtruth. And I'm going to unmute her so she can introduce herself now. Peace, Zahira. How are you? I'm wonderful. Peace, everybody. Thank you for having me on the show this evening. Yeah, so will you take some time and tell us and our listening audience a little about yourself? Sure. So I'm Zahira Our Truth, and I run ZNT Arts. It is a fine arts teaching, um, fashion, and make women's clothing with um, repurposed African fabric from Ghana and I make healing gemstone jewelry and I work closely in the community with other women providing them with workshops on jewelry making and I provide art classes and services to young children nice so okay so we know as an artist not like you know the the business side of things is often dreaded so when did you decide to make this transition into from an artist to an entrepreneur thank you that's a really good question so for me um you know a lot of times we're grinding we're working for somebody else and we're not investing in ourselves or making our passion valuable and I've had a lot of changes take place in my life over the last year or so and I decided that I really wanted to put focus more into my art, be creative, but also make money off of it exclusively where I'm supporting myself and my family and also giving other women the opportunity to support themselves. So that was kind of the catalyst and the changing point for me is where I said, you know, this is something that I love to do. Why don't I do this all the time? Right, because isn't it amazing when you're actually, as a fellow maker, I realized that myself a few months ago. I was in my kitchen. I was putting some things together for, um, I was doing some product development, actually. And Mm -hmm. my husband says to me, you look so happy and at peace when you were in there he's like you have all your supplies out the music is on he's like you just look so happy and he's like why don't you just do this and I was like you know what yes and I agreed it's like yep let's go do this because life I mean it's like we all assume that we have all this time and it's like 
why do we spend all this time doing things that we absolutely do not want to do going to jobs that we don't want to go to you know other than the fact that we all love to live indoors and eat food and you know <laughs> those types of things because it's, it's necessary you know but it's like if, it, if, if you if money wasn't an object and you could be doing something would you be doing the things that you named at you know in your introduction um, I still would be doing it. Um, and what I mean by that is, like, one thing I was talking to a friend earlier today, and we talked about, you know, what is it to be an artist, right? Um, mm-hmm. Being an artist is really, it's the only job where you're really looking for validation. You are creative, and you're creating something, and when you put it out to the community and you put it out to the world, you want you get instant feedback. You either get feedback they love it or they hate it. So, with that being said, um, in the past, or they're you know, just indifferent. Being, yeah, or the indifferent they have, they feel nothing at all, right? But in the past, yeah. let's say you're working for the man and you're doing your art on the side, you don't get that feedback as much because it's kind of like, oh, that's cute. that's your hobby, but like. Now, when you're really when you're really putting it on the line, and you're doing it all the time, people start to validate you more. You start to take yourself more seriously. Um, it's a whole different level to it, and there's different components to it than just being an artist. Like, so for me, like a lot of artists, my art is multifaceted. It includes painting and drawing. It includes um, clothing production. It includes jewelry making. And there's the teaching component that I do as well. So when you do, go ahead. Are you going to say something? Oh, no, I was just going to ask about the shift. So you said once you start taking yourself more seriously and other people start taking you more seriously, do you find that when you step out of that realm of it being a hobby and you start to treat it like a business, that other people then also, you know, their energy around it changes as well because it's no longer viewed as like, oh, that's just, you know, that's that cute little thing you do. But it's right. an actual, so like, it's legit not, business. So there's definitely a shift in conversation. There's a shift in view where it's kind of like, oh, hey, girl, that's cute. Oh, you paint. It's like, oh, you do this. But it's like, oh, no, you paint. Like, you really do this. Like, yes, I do this. This is my paint business. The capital P. Um, so you know and for me in particular I am a mom I am a mom of um, two boys they're African American and you know and I know that you're a mom also so for me you know art is valuable art has wealth to it and when you leave and art is something throughout history that tells us something about a civilization it tells us something Mm -hmm. about the time that we live in it tells us something about the creator. Um, and I feel like for me, this is my calling at this point in time in my life. And I'm going to keep going with it as long as the energy is there for me to do so. But I really do this for also the legacy component of it. And I guess you can say that's kind of like self centered because it's still about validation, right? Um, <laughs> but I really want but is it, to. But do you ever think all that validation it? piece? Do you think that really that it's also self-validation? Because sometimes, you know, and as we were discussing earlier, we create things that we love. So then Indeed. does somebody else loving it matter? Like how much does that really matter when you're creating because that's like what's in your soul to do? Right. Do you know what I mean? It's like right. you just have to mm-hmm. get it out. Because we hear people like Michael Jackson and like Prince and other people – And you hear them often talk about how, like, music is just in them. Like, they just have to get Mm -hmm. it out. They don't care if nobody else ever hears it. They don't care if nobody likes it. But it's just, they have to just, it it just oozes. And it's just in everything that they are. So, um, just to give you an example, um, such as yourself, I know you've been in the creative field for quite some time. I've been doing this for over 10 years. And let me tell you, 10 years Mm -hmm. ago, my art was in the closet literally in the closet, right? Because I wasn't at the place that I am now to say, hey, this is my life. 
this is this is what I want to do. So it's like now I'm bringing all of my skills, everything that I've learned over the years, including the business component because I've put myself as out as a business many times and kind of like when it doesn't when you're not as as successful as you think you are, you kind of like shudder and you're like, "Oh, I'm not doing this." Because you're like, oh man, nobody bought this. I didn't make any money. Like, is this worth it? And you have like all these doubts and and like fears and questions. But like now, I've learned different things. I've I've fallen down. I've gotten back up from trial and error. And I know a little bit more than I did ten years ago. So it's like now I get these kind of conversations. Like, oh, I didn't know you did this. Or I didn't know you you did that. But it's always been there. It's just I'm bringing all of it to the forefront now. So what's that transition look like for you now? Like this iteration of um, being a business owner and taking that, you know, bridging that gap because there definitely is, I think a lot of times with artists that Mm -hmm. we shy away because a lot of us are introverts too. So it's kind of this weird thing. It's like you do this very public thing, but in order to sell your problem. art, then you need to be an extrovert. You you have so, to like be able to like you have to go have these conversations. You have to talk with people. You have to understand that there is an art business. There's a there's can, a business of so art. Re- I can so relate to that. So just like you know, a few minutes ago, you mentioned how your husband was like, you know, you were in your limelight in the kitchen. If I can just be in my art space, creating that that is great for me but I recognize in order to be successful I have to get out there so a lot of times mm-hmm. people will come with me um, with information they'll say hey Zaheer you want to do this event and I'm like whoa there's going to be a lot of people there so like stepping outside of myself but in addition to that you know one thing about being a good business person is being able to observe other businesses and see how things work because mm-hmm. um, you know one thing that I've learned is let somebody else make a mistake and you learn not to make the mistake that they made so that you can be successful. So um, I do so take that into I, I, I want you to repeat that part. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that too fast for you? Okay. No, no, I, so, just, I really just want people to hear it again. <laughs> for the people in the back, okay. So one thing that I have learned and I've had to do currently is observe other businesses and how they operate see any mistakes or learning curves that they have and try not to make those mistakes as a business person. Okay. Okay. So I will Um, say this too. There's two parts to that. Sorry, I have questions. Um, (laughs) um, Do you, because what does this, so what steps, what's different this time around for you putting yourself out there as a business owner as opposed to the way that you did it in the past so it's so one thing about me um, being a business owner this time around in 2018 it's really about marketing it's about branding and it's about being accessible Um, and it's also about community for me like community is unity I know it sounds corny it sounds cheesy but being in the community of and particularly right now, I'm working with a community of women who um, are all entrepreneurs, um, small business owners that have a variety of different backgrounds. And we are there to support each other and help each other through this process so that we can be successful. Um, so like in, in the past, you know, a lot of times you're doing stuff by yourself. So you're like stumbling, you're falling, you're not. And you really don't know that you're making mistakes until you get to a certain point and you're like, oh, this didn't work out. But um, a part of marketing, you know, in the day and age that we live in, it's like all about social media. So having a online social media presence, my online social media presence is building and um, I'm excited about that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it also is also about community there because I connect with so many people online and then I actually connect with them offline. Okay. And you know, we were talking about that last hour also about mm-hmm. how you know using social media as a tool and not relying on it completely, and also mm-hmm. knowing that who your target is. And if they live online, then yes, you have to be online. But 
we've also we also know that there are successful businesses who put more energy and effort into I don't want to say more traditional avenues, but they just they oh, they fine. invested more in making physical connections with people, you know, more in person connections as opposed to social media. Like that that was part of their marketing, but it's just really figuring out which area to focus on that's important for you and your business where you are right now. Yes. And right. you said the key so, word with you start with, you know, talking to people online and you bring the conversation off. Of there as well right so so for example you know um, I got the ball rolling specifically um, when I came up with my business I registered my business in July of last year and just behind the scenes um, making products coming up with ideas um, things that I want to present and I said you know what in December because for me I thought that December would be a good buying season you know, due to the holidays, um, I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present Z&T art really hard to the community. And I did it in a physical format. So going to vending events, going to women's functions, um, going to African marketplaces, um, going to Kwanzaa events. So all these different kind of people-based events locally in my community having conversations with people and it kind of just has a trickle down effect. It's like, Hey, you're that girl that I saw over here. Hey, do you want to do this event? And then it's like, you know, people every once in a while will like post whatever they got from you on social media. And then it's like, Oh, you made this. It's like, yeah. So that kind of back and forth is what I like. I don't consider myself to be an exclusively online person. A lot of times when people come to me via social media, I connect with them off of social media and I'm able to offer them some type of customized product that they're interested in based on something they've might have seen before because what I do is very unique and um, it's it's handmade so it's always going to be a little bit different I don't do cookies now do you consider that. do you consider yourself to be a social person because sometimes, you know, there are those of us that hide behind the computer because, again, you know, for the introverts among us, um, mm -hmm. it's just easier to connect with people online than it is to um, that, you know, it, it's just an easier means to communicate. And as Brother Scotty just brought up, I'm going to read this to y'all, you know, about, you know, Facebook saying and this is actually a good point because as we talk about using social media as a vehicle to reach people and to advertise our businesses that facebook now says that they're going to start you know focusing more on you know as far as the news feed people's family and friends and as far as like business and brand pages they're only going to promote the ones that have a lot of engagement so if you're not posting content to promote your business that gets a lot of conversation then people, you know, less people are going to see those things because they said they really want to make the platform more about people connections and less about people just scrolling and clicking. Scroll, click, scroll, click. You know what I mean? Mm hmm So that's going to change that dynamic for a lot of people. So to answer your question, um, I consider probably myself that someone that's in the middle um, I'm pretty neutral when it comes to like social media or even just socializing in person. I feel like that it's one of those ways of being or things that gets to get done because you know it's a part of the process of being a, mm -hmm. a business person is that you need to communicate with people um, via social media and in person, especially if you want to connect with more people outside of your circle. So that's pretty that's pretty much what I'm currently doing right now um, connecting with like a variety of different people so my goal is like as far as like you know who's your market who's your target for me mm -hmm. everybody's my market everybody's my target I would hope that somebody would see my work and see something that is appealing to them even though now why do you work... feel like everybody because it's kind <laughs> of like a selling thing that I and I learned this recently well actually last year I took a class on how to sell and make money through the um, black business school 
Um, and it was one of the offerings, you know, on the platform that Dr. Boyce Watkins has. And it was taught um, by a wonderful young lady. Um, she did a really good job. And oh my gosh, all I'm seeing is her first name. Um, but anyway, so point is though, like they said, if you're selling to everybody, you're selling to nobody. You so because we can hear that last statement. These. Oh, it says if you're selling to everybody, you're selling to nobody. And the premise really? is that we are because we can't be all things to all people. And what we do, mm. it isn't necessarily for everybody. So it mm-hmm. is really good to know like who you who's gonna be attracted to what you have and who is that especially from an art perspective because it's so subjective and art is so personal who's what does that buyer look like so a lot of what i create is based um you know in african culture has an african-centered field but in my experience of being out in the community and i live in boston and boston has a small um African-American community, it's mostly Caucasian. We do have some folks here that are in the arts and music culture and some conscious um, people here as well. But in my experience of going to some of these events in um, different parts of the city, I found that the variety of products that I offer, um, I found that people who look like me either loved it or hate it and then I found people who didn't look like me really loved it so it was kind of a learning experience being in these different social settings having the opportunity to um, share my work and what it is that I do so that's that's why I said that because I find that I do have a variety of different things that appeal to different people or even so for example I sell waist beads and I was at an event and a man um he was of Hispanic culture, and he said he never saw it, but it was beautiful, and he really liked it, and he wanted one. And I had to tell him that if you want to buy it, that's fine, but let me tell you that, you know, um, you know, these are waist beads, you know, traditionally African culture, you wear them around your waist, and they represent different things. He's like, oh, my goodness, I wish you had these for me, you know. And another time I had a father, a Caucasian father, and his daughter, and his daughter just really loved the artwork, and then he came over, he saw the artwork, and he liked it too, and he bought, like, three prints. So that's why I said, like, I hope there's something that attracts everybody. But I do particularly focus on work that's related to African culture. So you're right in that regard. So what do you think, though, from a from the people who gravitate, you know, towards your art and what you do, whether it's the waist beads or, you know, paintings or drawings like Mm -hmm. there's a there's typically like if we all sit back and we think about our businesses, there usually is a common thread there. And it's not necessarily along, like, ethnic lines all the time or, you know, racial dynamics. But there is something that each of those people that gravitate to you have in common. And it's like once we can unlock what that is, then that opens us up to, you know, being able to, like, okay, what language do they speak? And Onyx, you are really good at this because for her brand she dissects all of that and I'm just like Ooh. you know I mean like down to like in a very detailed way that she goes about like gleaning all that information and what she looks at you know um, and, and that's, that's something that, that, that develops over time it's something that you know um, there's different ways to go about it um, I hear what you're saying I'm trying so hard not to call you Foxy, Erica, <laughs> about um, t- like narrowing down on her on your niche. Uh, that's what you're talking about, and from our guest experience, she's finding that um, she has a culturally she has a diverse audience, and like you said, there is mm-hmm. some com- commonalities in between there. So it's really just. For certain things like marketing, that's where you want to know what those commonalities are. And it, it matters in terms of where you're trying to go. Um, mm-hmm. But right now, it's like you have something that a lot of different people are looking at. But over time, you're going to see a bigger, a broader um, map, for lack of a better word, 
of what those people have in common. Mm -hmm. So there's certain businesses that start off and they solve a problem for one particular type of person. So um, going along that line, you said that you started um, off for thing, offering things to that serve a certain market. And I don't know if you said it already, whether you kind of said it where you said people who look like you are not supporting. Mm-hmm. And so do you have any kind of idea as to why that is? Is it a price um, pain for them or, you know? So, so that's a common thread that goes on in a lot of groups because we see that across Black Business Moms group. We see that in Black Girls Craft group. Like, we see it across, you know, so many groups talk about that. And even um, with the platform that we're currently on, you know, just that is a common thread. And it's like, yeah. I think maybe getting to the root of that, like, what is that? <laughs> so I was going to say, I just want to be clear is that what what I'm thinking in mind of what the support looks like, it's not as much as I would think. But what I can say is when I am out in the community and I'm in particular um, groups of women um, or groups of men and women who are like into arts and culture, who are quote unquote conscious in that regards, does that make sense? I get Mm -hmm. really positive feedback. I get a lot of support. Mm -hmm. Um, But in other kind of circles, um, dealing with um, people of color, it's it's definitely a different kind of vibe, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. We've all experienced it. And you brought me up because my particular business caters to um, a very wide market as well because I make mm-hmm. soap is my one of my major products. You know, anybody can use soap. I have formulated for sensitive skin. That's why she used me as an example. Because if I... But that that doesn't necessarily mean that when I'm designing my ads when I'm choosing the language from our website things like that that I am talking to everyone I try to narrow it down and use a specific voice to the people who I have learned are the most likely to first that's what she so she was trying to bring up the difference that's Mm -hmm. all and it's hard you know sometimes when you set out to cater to a specific need (laughs) and then you might not get the love from the specific (laughs) people that you're trying to serve, it kind of, you know, it kind of can deter you or demoralize and have you feeling like you need to switch things up. Right. And and sometimes, I mean, you do need to switch things up. It's just which things to switch up. You don't necessarily need to switch teams entirely. Um, You know what I'm saying? I do. (laughs) Yeah, that's... We all beating around the bush. <laughs> Sorry, but... <laughs> I ain't even gonna throw a popular brand out issue. there, but we all know mm-hmm. it is. It truly, issue. truly is. Because it hurts. It it does hurt. I got trust me. I know. And you're like, wait a minute. What's this? <laughs> I created this specifically for you. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But yeah. So I will say, so when we come back, so we're going to take another break here in about three minutes. And I want to hear about this healing jewelry because I heard that and it perked my ears up. Okay. So I definitely want to hear more about that when we come back um, from the break. So y'all stay where you are and, you know, come right back with us on Black Sea Beauty's Radio. In 2008, the Black Talk Media Project launched the digital radio platform, Black Talk Radio Network, the first such platform created to serve the black community specifically. Black Talk Radio Network has grown with a variety of radio hosts, digital radio stations, and podcasters. Web analytics say Black Talk Radio, the platform, has an online reach that ranks it among the top independent black media platforms in the world. All of this is possible because of financial contributions to the nonprofit Black Talk Media Project. 
Project. If you love the work we do and the voices and perspectives we bring to you every day, make a donation today to ensure that Black Talk Radio is here in the future. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Okay, and we are back with Onyx Burrell and Zahir Nur Truth, our guest for this hour. And before we went to the break, I was saying that I wanted to hear more about this healing um, jewelry that Zahira uh, creates. So if you could please tell us about that. I, I would love to. I have to tell you a little bit about me um, personally. So um, I am into like holistic health. I'm a vegan. I've been a vegan slash vegetarian for over 10 years. And when I was in my 20s, I met um, a healer in New York by the name of Queen Afua. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with her, but she's a mm-hmm. um, well-known healer in the community. And I went, <laughs> yes, and I went through an African rites of passage with her, and she talked a lot about food and about health and about how um, gemstones um, come from the earth. They have metaphysical properties that support with healing related to your psyche, your mind, and your body, or, you know, however it is that you relate to a particular stone and what your beliefs are. So for me, in my jewelry making, I tend to gravitate towards particular stones that I feel that would be beneficial to the community. Um, some common ones that I work with is rose quartz and amethyst. And in all of my jewelry making, even if it's like the most minute stone, the simplest bead, I try to incorporate it into my jewelry making for that particular um, property because I want people to feel connected to the I want them to feel like they have something that they can connect with that is going to bring value um, to their life and also want them to feel beautiful. So that is one of the reasons why I incorporate healing crystal gemstones into my jewelry. In addition to that, I also try to incorporate kari shells into my artwork, but also into the jewelries that I make because throughout history and ancient times related to Africa, Kari shells were known to be used as a source of currency for um, buying goods or bartering. And for me, they no longer have that same usage, but they're a simple reminder of value and to valuing oneself. So that's why, and to me, that is healing within itself. So that's kind of a little bit of what I do with the jewelry making. Um, so it's what earrings. Kind of jewelry do you make? Wonder, so I do um, gemstone and glass bead work. I do um, copper wire work earrings with um, mm-hmm. gemstones and car shells. So I make earrings, necklaces, bracelets, and waist beads. Okay. So with that, so what... Um Do you, when you set up at the different community events that you said you go to, are you also selling your jewelry or is it just your art or do you bring together like a compilation of the various passions that you have? It sounds crazy, but girl, I bring it all. I have everything on deck. (laughs) I got the artwork. I got the jewelry. I got the clothes. I have everything. And, um... What I find is, and this is in this end, so to your co-host, this is how I know that, like, I appeal to different people because I got one person in this community buying art. I got one person in this community buying jewelry. So that's why I was like, it's kind of like it's open to who receives it. That sounds like a boutique. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's I'm a lot of fun. It's a... It's and a you lot of fun. Are actually in this thing. Y'all, you all are about an hour away from each other. Yeah. Oh my are you serious? We yeah. have to link up. Yes. Yeah, we do. I was just I was just saying I was just messaging. But guess saying, what? You like, know what's so funny? We might already know each other from just being possible. at an event or something. <laughs> yeah. I just moved back to Boston. The not Boston, but you know, Western Mass. So what area are you in? 
right now I'm in Western Mass. Um, you know where Northampton is? No. It's the far as my mind can go. It's, okay, I was going to say, like, Worcester, Springfield, Marlboro, like somewhere in that area. Spring, closer to Springfield than Worcester. Okay, okay. Like right in between. <laughs> That's too funny. She's a good ways away from Boston. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm not... I'm not far in terms of like I'll be going back and forth. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, we definitely need to speak up. See connections. Okay, and there's some overlap in y'all's businesses, but I will let y'all work that out <laughs> and know what you do. You're talking what about she does. So I'm trying to find you have to tell us how to spell your name because I'm trying to find your website right now. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so we're so, so, so right now I'm on Etsy. Okay. And um it's Zahara Nertruth Art and I'll spell my first name for you. Um it's Z A H I R A H and then Nur is my middle name, that's N U R and my last name is Truth, T R U T H Art. So oh, my professional hurt? Go ahead. I couldn't hear you. I'm trying to pull it up right now. All right. (laughs) Carry on. So you said you're professional? Yeah, I was just going to say my professional website is going to launch the end of this month, beginning of February. I have some people working on a logo for me. I'm also working on some um, videos and headshots and some um, other professional photos that's going to go on my website related to my artwork um, and I am also launching a business campaign at the end of this month as well I am working with um, a group of women under a organization called I Fund Women and they are located in different areas throughout the company throughout the country I should say and they are company so is it called I focused. find women or I fund no. women I fund like as in money okay, okay. I fund, I fund women, women. Okay. Mm-hmm. got it and I'm a part of their Boston cohort um, the Boston section is very special because not only do I work with I fund women I also work with another organization called we Boston and we stand for women entrepreneurs and it's through the city of Boston, the mayor's office, which is um, Mayor Marty Walsh. And it's a crowdfunding platform to support women in gaining um, capital for their businesses so that they can be successful. So I'm part of a really great dynamic team of diverse um, entrepreneurs in the city of Boston. I'm really excited about it. And my I Fund Women Boston campaign launches the end of this month as well, starting February 1st. Nice. And see, this is great information to have because my co-host here, who um, she doesn't know it yet, but I'm so going to talk her into being my regular co-host. Um, oh, that's exciting. <laughs> I will be coming up there. Um because I'll be in that area too. So this is going to be great. So I can see you. I can see Onyx. And um, 2018 is going to be a pretty awesome year. So everything that I heard you listing just now um, on your to-do list, it sounds like you have a plan for 2018. So I will ask you the same question that I asked our guest last hour, Mr. Taylor. Um have you done an inventory of what worked and what did not work for you in 2017 as far as business? And do you have a roadmap, and it sounds like you do, moving forward um, for 2018 to meet your business goals? Okay. So, honestly, 2017 was a blur for me. I dealt with some um, health challenges and kind of like my art and everything else that was life kind of fell on the back burner. It wasn't until, like I said, you know, July, September, that I kind of loosely put together a draft of what I wanted to do. So I do have a plan um, going forward 
for 2018, a lot of it involves branding, um, providing um, services related to um, teaching, and then also just branding my business and letting people know that, you know, ZNT Arts provides these, pro- these products, but we also provide services um, mm-hmm. as well. So that's kind of loosely answers your question about the plan that I have going forward for 2018. And, Can you tell us um, what services do you provide? Sorry. Yeah, great. So I provide teaching services to children that are ages 1 to 12 years old related to fine arts, so drawing and painting. Um, my specialty is watercolor um, and still life drawings and for younger children, um, sensory-based exploratory art. So that's kind of art that has a science component and a sensory component, and that's for children like one to five years old. And then I do six to 12, which has a stronger emphasis on skilled art. Okay. And were you going to tell us something else about your 2018 plan before I asked about your services? I could not hear you. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I said, were you going to tell us something else about your 2018 plans before I asked about your services? You know, for some reason, Spirit, I wasn't going to say anything. For some reason, you just asked me that question. I I said I should just put it out there. You know, 2018 is really big for me. I feel like everything that I came to do, I'm going to get it done. But what's on the horizon, um, fingers crossed, knocked on wood, tap dance, whatever, is, you know, traveling to Ghana in regards to my business in April because I am currently building connections in Ghana um, to cut out the middle person to have fabric for my business. And um, something that I have, something that I have on the horizon is to launch a fabric clothing line that caters to tearlit pieces of clothing. So that's like shirts, skirts, and things of that nature um, related to women's fashion. Nice. No, I mean, you know, like Erica Badu says, write what you want down with real pen and paper and watch real ish happen. Now that's what oh, she listen, says. That's, and y'all know. that's all I just I just want you to know that is tried and true and that is all I do. So everything that I've told you from July up until this point I have it written down and that and when I write stuff down, I date and time it. And if your spirit moves me and I have an idea, I don't know about you ladies, I wake up out my sleep and I write it down so that yeah. I don't forget. And then I apply it because it's that's what it's really all about. You write it down, you apply it, and you get it done. So I have lots of great ideas and things that I'm going to be bringing forward this year with my art. Yay. I'm so happy because you know we okay so we met in the mean streets of DC many 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 moons ago (laughs) should I tell the story briefly (laughs) yes tell the story (laughs) yes so just to tell the story briefly um, Erica and I were part of a moms group called Mocha Moms which for moms of color and um, we were both expecting and I thought Erica was due like you know, later before me. One thing about Mocha Moms is really about community support and other moms and families um, bring you things for your baby, they clean your house for you, they bring you food, they come and hold the baby so you can take a bath. You know, whatever it is that you need, it's really about community creating that extended village. So Erica and I connected on email and then we connected on the phone and she said, yeah, girl, I'm going to come see you. And I said, all right, great. And then I never heard from her. I didn't hear from her for like maybe a few weeks, right? So I finally reached back out to her, and I said, hey, girl, what's going on? She said, girl, I have my baby. I said, girl, how would you come in to help me, and you just had your baby? She's like, I didn't know. She, li- our, our kids are three days apart, so how would you come in to get me, wow. come in to help me? How would you come in, to, come in to see me and help me do some stuff when your baby's just ready to fall out, okay? So that's how... Uh, <laughs> So that's how her and I became friends, and um, we've done a lot of things together. Um, My kids had their first birthdays together because their birthdays are so close. And, um, 
even though I'm here in Boston and she's no longer in D.C., we stayed in touch all this time, and she's a very supportive person and um, a really great creative woman. So thank you for having me on the radio show today. And thank you for being on the radio show. I'm loving everybody. And I know people probably listen. Like, she keeps inviting all these people in here. She knows. But I know a lot of amazing entrepreneurs and people that are doing (laughs) really interesting work. I mean, and Mm -hmm. that's just the truth of it. You know what I mean? It's just like people, and I've been on this journey and watching people as they go through this and so many people have said to me and this is only what the third week of 2018 and everybody is literally saying almost verbatim the same thing that 2018 Mm -hmm. is their year like because 2017 put people through the ringer whether it was financially physically emotionally spiritually whatever it was people went through it last year Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people who were just like you know what but they kept going and Mm -hmm. all of us you know have shown up for each other in various ways and even if we couldn't be there for each other you know physically you know in the flesh but it's still like okay you know I'm only a phone call away you know you can send me a message you can text me you know whatever it is and everybody has still been there and been supportive and a lot of things are coming together for people and it excites me to see it I mean because even for us in two days on the 20th I started branding boot camp and I've been at this this is Foxy's 11th year and you know we're going through that and I'm just like you know we've been mapping some things out and I'm hearing y'all say that you wrote things down brother Scotty said he wrote some things down and you know things come to fruition they really do and I am my dream at this point it terrifies me to the point I haven't even written it down yet I'm so scared of it at this moment well well no I'm, you know I'm one one thing that I can <laughs> say um out of 2017 coming into 2018 um I am relentless and I strive to be fearless when it comes to my art and you know just write it down you're just writing it down and then once it's out you can take it from there and it might take on a life of its own you know but Right. One thing that I can say is just be relentless and be fearless. It can be scary. It can be overwhelming. Um, sometimes it's not about how you do it. It's just knowing that you are going to do it. Because the right. how will Lisa work Nichols itself out. It. This is say true. What? I think Lisa Nichols said, um, if your dream doesn't terrify you, then you're not dreaming big enough. Like if it doesn't <laughs> scare you, you know what I mean? It's like get a bigger dream. Because it should scare yeah. you. Right, right. You know, and I think for so many years, and we had numerous conversations with, you know, just different people of like, you know, family not being supportive, friends not being supportive, different people just kind of crapping on your dream, essentially, and your yeah. ideas and what you want to do and question, you know, how can you do it? And I think the main thing, and just to bring it back for, you know, anybody that's aspiring to entrepreneurship or somebody that's been in it for a while and you're feeling like you're at a certain point, is just knowing that the people around you, they can't see where you're going. All they can see is the person that you are right now. But that vision and that dream that you have was given to you and you alone. Like, it's Mm -hmm. not for everybody else to see necessarily. Like, that's your walk. Right. And so, so just it's like the thing about it. vision. Vision is related to your sight, you know, mm-hmm. and it's how you see something. That's exactly what um, you know. Vision is, and sometimes people will get in your way in your field of vision, and you can't see. Sometimes people will try to turn off the lights in the area. You know, some people will try to throw things up, you know, in your face. But if there's anything that I can say about this journey over the years of being um, just an artist and now taking my art and make it into um, my business and my livelihood is that there's always going to be somebody that's going to hate on you. There's always going to be somebody who is going to try to put you down and you have to recognize that that's not your conversation. That's their conversation. Mm-hmm. And just and know it's not that. Your business? 
Right, and just know, you know, whatever gift or talent or whatever it is that you're bringing to the community or the world, that's for you to bring and for you to bring alone. And if you have a partner or if you have, you know, business folks who are like-minded with you, lean on those people because that's what those people are there for. You know, one thing that I can say about being in this um, Women Entrepreneurship Program through iFund Women Boston is that you are dead serious about being scared. You know, I meet other women that are overwhelmed because it does take a lot of work to brand yourself. It takes a lot of work to build your contacts and your network bases. It takes a lot of work to get things up and running, but the point is to get it up and running and to do it and not to give up on it because you are worth it. Your business is worth it. You know, whatever it is that you're doing for your family, like I said, I do this for my legacy, which is my children. They are worth it. Mm -hmm. So it kind of comes back to the work that I do as far as like the car shelves that is value. It's like, it is worth it. And I'm just paying it forward to the next person. Really? Yeah. I mean, and that is, it's, it's key and people need to hear those things too. And also just be reminded stop focusing on those people who don't show up for you and focus up on the people focus on the people who are there focus on the people that do support you and love you and sometimes we can get you know a hundred no we can get 99 compliments Mm -hmm. and one person have something negative to say and we will fixate on that one person and miss the 99 (laughs) right you know it's it's so that is so hard and I think you know, that's a part of human nature, but uh, I am an Aries, and even though I'm, like, fiery and creative, I am super sensitive, and I'm the first to say that I always hear that one little thing, but for 2018, I am learning that what you eat does not make me go boo-boo, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so I am I am just doing me. I am enjoying this journey, and um, I hope that other people enjoy their journey and they don't let anything discourage them. Just keep going. And and part of the journey, too, is quitting, because I tell you, last year, I know I quit at least 10 times. I know I did. Once a it month, is, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know when I really but, wasn't going anywhere, but in that moment that you're in your feelings or, you know, right. whatever frustration or obstacle you're having, you're just like, oh, my gosh, you know, and you do get those feelings of, of being overwhelmed or like, this is not working, and just like, what am I doing? And you do start to question it, so... And people need to know that's so, real. And that doesn't mean, you know, that you're a failure or anything like that. That's just part of the journey. Indeed. And, you know, honestly, when you say, like, I'm going to quit, it's really like a battle cry of, like, how can I do this differently? How can I reinvent something mm-hmm. in this moment? How can I make this work better? So it's kind of like, it's not, because if you're still here, you didn't quit. So it's just really like, how can I change this up in this moment to get to the next step to create something fresh, to, you know, be successful, to present something different in a new way? I know for me, I'm constantly thinking, how can I make something outside the box? How can I do something unique? Um, And sometimes I step away and then I come back, you know, and that's not quitting. That's just giving yourself space to have fresh vision, to have new eyes, and going literally going back to the drawing board, right, and doing something new. Mm-hmm. For sure. I mean, it's just, it's it's a journey. It most definitely is a journey. And I would tell anybody, and I keep saying it, you know, it's a marathon. It it is not a sprint. Mm-hmm. Entrepreneurship and building a business by any stretch of the imagination. And for some people, it may appear, you know, that they that the success comes faster. And it's one of those things that we have to stop comparing, like what this person is doing to what you're doing, because that's their walk. And Mm -hmm. this is your walk, you know, because over the course of all these years, I've met people who built successful businesses, had millions generated millions in revenue. And I mean, this is after they paid all their overhead, they had millions and they lost it all. And they're like, Mm. we had to start all over. And they learned from that that fast success that they had 
on building the next venture that they did, they decided, okay, we're not going to make those same mistakes that we just made, that we made the last right. time out the gate. You know, and even being on this radio show, this has been something that people have been nudging me towards for a really long time. And I was always like, nope, I don't want to be in front of people. <laughs> as much as chatty as I am, y'all know this. But I'm really right. that introverted. I like more, you know, smaller crowds, more intimate Behind conversation and people. <laughs> yes. And people tell me their life story, you know? Right. And, and Jamal will often say, how do you know? He's like, that person just told you all that? Yep. You know, and he's like, were you asking them questions? And I was like, only like stuff that was relevant to the conversation. I was like, but no, I, I don't pry into people's business. They tell me willingly, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What's going on? And so I just, I don't know. I just love this journey. And I love seeing people manifest their dreams and really get their heart's desires, even if, you know, that dream changes. Because sometimes it does. You know, it's like as you start on this walk with the thing that the goal that you started work walking towards changes. And that's okay too, because as we grow and we learn, you know, and we get more skills and we amass more knowledge, then it's almost like being a child. You know, and it's like those dreams that we had as children, they change as we grow and we, we mature but we still you know cross that finish line and get to where we want to get to and then we realize okay this is just a, a, a marker on the journey like the journey's not over so it, I know for me I have always been an artist I have been painting and drawing since third grade and mm -hmm. you know growing up in, in a black southern style home it's like you need to go get a job you know art's not real so it wasn't until I was in my 20s that I really was like oh I'm an artist you know what I mean so here I, I'll be 35 in a few months it's like 15 years later you know 10 years into this artistic journey and really making it into my livelihood here I am really embracing my dream and like living it so Z&T Arts really is my baby birthing it forward writing everything down for it um, and just bringing this dream to where it needs to be, just manifesting it. And that's just kind of um, where I'm at right now. Yeah. I absolutely, I mean, I love it. I do. I mean, and I'm glad that, you know, we talked and I mean, and people may not know, like this was really not even planned for today. It happened to be that we were <laughs> on the phone about something else. And I'm like, oh, I need a guest. You know what I mean? I'm like, I have one, but I need another one. And you were like, you can interview me. And that's just how, and I think life works like that. And even being Indeed. in business, sometimes opportunities will just come about like that. So mm -hmm. like just, and you were prepared to come on and do this tonight. You right. know, and with so like a couple one, hours notice. So exactly. So one thing about being an entrepreneur, but just about being a creator, and this probably sounds like super guru metaphysical or something, but like at this point in my life, I'm about saying yes. And I mentioned earlier about sometimes you don't know the how, like the steps, but you just know mm -hmm. you need to get it done. So like, you know, earlier when you said, hey, I need somebody, I knew that I could be available. That was just me being a yes. So at, my, at this point in my life, I'm a yes for anything that I think is going to be beneficial to me or be beneficial um, to somebody else as it relates to being an entrepreneur and a businesswoman. Okay. Well, as we have about two minutes left, will you tell our listeners once again how they can find you on social media, find you at an event in Boston, how they can connect with you, um, get some wonderful art, jewelry, um, services for their children, you know, as far as it relates to STEM and art and science and all that good stuff. So um, I'm all about social media. I have Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I am heavy on Instagram. I love Instagram. So all, my names on all of those platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr is the, D-A, 
Artist, A-R-T-I-S-T, V-N-T. The Artist C-N-T is where you can find me on Instagram, Tumblr, and Twitter. And on Facebook, it is Zahira, <coughs> Z-A-H-I-R-A-H, Nur, N-U-R, Truth, T-R-U-T-H, Arts. And that is my name on Etsy. If you want to get some handmade healing beautiful products for me and um, I'm really speedy on applying back to DMs and you can also call me if you want to talk to me about um, working on a custom project. My phone number is 617-501-0090 but the best way to keep abreast of what I'm doing in the city or in the community is to follow my Facebook page and to follow my Instagram page. I definitely keep and pop it and um, update on it almost every day. Well, I want to say thank you for being on. And it was our pleasure chatting with you this evening. And, you know, thank you to um, the Blacks and Business Radio and Black Talk Media Project family. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.